Congress Zinduka 2014, themed People's Voices, Sustainable Development, comprising of all citizens, civil society, private sector, professional associations, and other interest groups in East Africa. I want to say, number one, that I am glad that Zinduka is premised on Pan-Africanism. I congratulate you. Because you see, East African Political Federation is also located in the Pan-African agenda. We, we know that Pan-Africanism was born of five centuries of oppression, exploitation, domination, humiliation, and indignity visited on African peoples by our colonial masters. Now, if any of you thinks that this humiliation is over, you better think again. Because the world order today still humiliates African peoples. And therefore, Pan-Africanism's time is today. It's not yesterday. It is today. There are some people who say they are nationalists. Now, for those of you who think that nationalism is good, I would have you know that Pan-Africanism gave rise to nationalism. It's not the other way around. It's people were not born to say we are Tanzanian, we are Burundi, we are Rwandese, we are Kenyans, we are Ugandans. No. It is the Pan-Africanist Congress of 1945 which pushed for independence from our colonial masters and gave us eventually the borders that we now exhibit. And therefore, you cannot be a true Pan-Africanist, a true nationalist, without being a Pan-Africanist. It is not possible. Now let me talk a little bit about East African political integration, and that's my second point. The East African political integration process is part of a Pan-Africanist vision. Let me read for you what our founder fathers, former President Kenyatta of Kenya, Mwalimu Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, and Prime Minister, President Obote said on 5th June 1963 in Nairobi when they were beginning the East African Political Federation process. They said, and I, I quote, we the leaders of the people and governments of East Africa assembled in Nairobi on 5th June 1963, pledge ourselves to the political federation of East Africa. Our meeting today is motivated by the spirit of Pan-Africanism and not by mere regional interests. We are nationalists and reject tribalism racialism, and inward-looking policies. We believe that the day of decision has come, and to all our people we say there is no more room for slogans and words. This is our day of action in the cause of the ideals that we believe in, and the unity and freedom for which you have suffered and sacrificed so much. These are our founding fathers in 1963. 
They saw East African integration as part of a broader Pan-Africanist agenda. Now, there are some people who say, let us first night economically, you've heard of them, wanasema pole pole, eh? pole pole ndi omwendo. Let's first unite economically and then see the benefits of economic integration and then eventually unite politically. I do not agree. I do not agree because you see economic integration without political integration gives you half-baked. It becomes half-baked. How can you have a fully functional common market with free movement of people, of goods, a, a functional monetary union with free movement of capital without political integration? It's possible. And therefore, as we integrate economically, we need to integrate politically. There are some people who say we need to create economic equality before we can come together. You've heard them. Or they will say, no, you see, the Kenyans are big. Kenya is a big economy. It will swallow all of us. How can Kenya be a big economy? Kenya is a very small economy. The combined GDP of all of us, including Kenya, is about $90 billion. That is smaller than the economy of Angola. All of us combined are smaller than the economy of Angola. And yet people go around saying, oh, Kenya is a big economy, Kenya is going to swallow us. Kenya has no mouth big enough to swallow anybody here. So, how are you going to create economic equality? Even within our own countries, all regions are not equally rich. In Uganda, they have issues with Karamoja. I'm sure in Kenya, they have issues with Tukana. In Rwanda, they have issues with some of the southern provinces where I come from. In Burundi, they have issues with some areas that are poorer than the others. So you cannot say, let's create economic equality before we unite politically. If you think like that, then you would have to break apart our countries as they now stand. So this is not right. We have to create unity in order to remove the colonial and the development of East African economies. So it's the other way around. If we integrate, then we shall have the capacity to remove these inequalities. If we do not, then we shall all be poor in our sovereignty. You know, the people who are like a lot of sovereignty, yeah? they want to be sovereign and poor. No, I don't think it makes sense. We should be able to unite to create the wealth that we need. This is my last point. My last point is that uh, the political integration agenda is people-centered and market-driven. I am glad that uh, you have come together and I wish to thank the organizers for organizing this festival because sometimes when uh, 
people want to go very slow on integration, they say our people, our people are not aware, our people are asking us to go slow. Now, I was listening to the uh, presenters here, and the message seems to be that for you, you want to move faster on integration. If this is what you want, then say so very loudly. Tell us. I had, uh, I was interested to listen to the Kepta's uh, hierarchy of needs. I, <laughs> it's the first time I hear of uh, this hierarchy of needs. What he wants in his hierarchy is free movement of uh, people, marriage, and business. In that order. That's this is the first time I hear of this hierarchy. But the point I'm trying to make is that we will work with you. The treaty says our integration agenda is people-centered. And therefore, you should organize to make East African integration a reality on during your lifetime. This is not an agenda only for the leaders. This is not an agenda only for those of us who work at the community. This should be an agenda for you, the people of East Africa.